to art to lifestyle and today I have a video for the girls because I am making Pinterest dinner party menus and graphics. I love the style so much. I see it all over the place and I want to show you guys how I illustrate and create things like this. I sell these packs and these templates online and it brings me so much joy so I just want to talk a little bit about my process and how I go about this. If you just want to make these illustrations at home for your next event, this is also a perfect video to watch. And if you just want the template, there will be a template. It is linked below. If you could just like put the video on in the background and let it play, I would really appreciate it. If not, that's okay. I want you to have cute things as well. So without further ado, I am just gonna get to my desk and start this video. Hi, welcome to my desk. If you see direct lighting on my face being weird, then you don't. So my first thing that I always do on a project is create a mood board and then an item list. Mood boards, super self-explanatory. I just collect all of these photos. My Pinterest was already full of work like this, so it was super easy. But the item list is a little bit harder. The item list just serves as a little bit of a brain dump. So when I get in the groove of actually making things, I don't have to be swapping around and thinking of inspiration. And this is a list of just the actual items that you are going to draw. I have Pinterest boards with physical items that I can look towards, or I have just written out lists for this. But basically, for a pack like this, I'm just going to write every single item. So wine glass, wine bottle, fruits and vegetables, lobster, candlesticks, placemats, and I get all these things from looking actual photos of the thing that I want to make. So I was looking at like photos of dinner parties and seeing what was on the table and just going through like random photos of food and stuff to kind of spark the gears rolling. And this applies to any pack or any illustration set. So if you want to draw a bunch of flowers, go and look at a book of a bunch of flowers and write down all the names that you see of poppies and daisies and daffodils. And then when you go and find style that you like it's super easy to just get it done so with my two mood boards all set up I am ready to go in and draw so I draw on my iPad using Procreate. I had a really hard time with digital art until I figured out textures and the pens I like. If you are having a hard time too, try to just download a random paper texture from online. I'll actually link one below that I'll make. And it was like night and day. For some reason, having the fake texture was enough to like trick my brain into thinking that it was pen and paper and things look so much better with texture. So I go in, I add Add a texture in my background and then I just go and draw and my goal with these illustrations is to have one page where it all matches after I fill up the whole page I take that page lower the opacity super down and then draw another page on top of it and it's really helpful for me to have a sense of scale and to kind of keep track of what I've already drawn and I always do this three or four times depending on how many items I want and then at the end and I'll have all of these layers with a bunch of different illustrations on them. So now you have all of your layers with illustrations. I export them all individually. Um, there's a setting on Procreate that lets you export all your layers or you can do them one by one. Always export them as PNG because PNGs are the only file format that supports transparent backgrounds. So now we are in Illustrator. I get all of my files in here and then all we are gonna do is go up here and do image trace. I use special presets that I make. It's really good for you to learn how to do that as well. Over here is the button that lets you actually change the preset and how it works. You can just play around with it. So basically what this does is it scans the PNG that we have and then converts it into a decently clean vector. And the fun part about vectors is that they're more editable and it's kind of the industry standard when it comes to illustrations. So once you have everything all traced and vectorized, you're gonna ungroup this, and then I go through and clean everything up. And basically I just click the line work and try to save the illustrations in a way where I have the least amount of actual pieces. 
So I have some graphics that saved as one complete line and I love keeping them like that. So I disregard any little thoughts or spots that are left over and not really necessary and that's how I clean these up. So I go through individually and just look at the illustrations, make sure that only the lines that should be there are there and then group those items. And you want to make sure that you are grouping the item with itself. So if you have something like a lemon that has little dots on it, make sure those dots are grouped with the actual lemon body. And then I collect all of those, put them in one big file, and then go into asset export. If you're just making something casually for yourself, you don't have to use this, but if you're interested in selling these, this is a very important step. So you are going to select everything and then click this little button. Basically, it's telling the computer that these are all separate items and you kind of categorize them that way. So now you have a whole catalog of everything that was in your files and then from here you are gonna name all of them because you don't want to pass off to a client a file with a hundred or two hundred items that just say asset one, asset two, asset three, especially when they're SVGs which means that you won't be able to preview them. So I go through and name glass one glass two, lemon one, lemon two, wine bottle, chair one. And then down here, you can export them as an SVG or a PNG, and it will organize them and put them in your own files. SVGs, you just export it's math, so it's not contained to pixels in the way other things are. But if you export it as a PNG, you have to tell the computer how many pixels you want it. And I always just do trial and error with this. I export a few things, pull it up in my computer, zoom in, see how many pixels I can see, and if it's acceptable. And if not, I go back to the drawing board and try again. I never export them as locked heights and widths. I always do it as a ratio. You'll see you can 10x, 5x, 2x how large it is. And I do that because in your illustration, illustrations, the lobster should be bigger than the lemon and the amount of pixels in it should scale appropriately. So I always use scaling functions when exporting rather than just site setting a height and width for everything. Yeah, now you have a super functional set of illustrations that you can use for your own menus, invites, whatever you'd like. You can sell them online. You can give them friends, whatever you want to do. Below, I'll have a little mini pack with some of the illustrations I did. Full pack will be available on my creative market. And I'll also have some little like inspiration menus that you can follow along to and make your own. And if you're curious about what font I use with these, it's called Homemade Apple and it's a free Google font. So. You can pick that up below and get the exact style that I have here. I feel like this topic is kind of drab, but I love setting people up with passive income and not in like a scammy girl boss make a course way. So if you're also interested in that and you want to hear more about Creative Market and how I got started on there, I would love to talk about it. Let me know what you guys want and hopefully I see you guys again.